Have you ever wondered how to become a better web designer? Well, if you did, this is precisely what we're gonna talk about today. Those people are the people that can find jobs easily. Now, as you can see, I'm not in my bed. I'm actually in the couch. Now, maybe you like something else. I can build pretty much anything I want. Whether you're employed or working for yourself, this is something you can do. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist, and today we're gonna talk about how you can become a better web designer. Now, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you because the mere fact that you're trying to become a better web designer already separates you from the pack. So if you do wanna become a better web designer and sell premium websites and just forget about those low paid jobs, make sure you watch this video until the end. Okay, tip number one is very simple. Stop using pre-made stuff for all of your projects. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should never use pre-made stuff, but that's the difference between using pre-made stuff on all of your projects or just some projects. If you want to become a better web designer, you need to start actually designing stuff. That's going to be the difference between mediocre web designers and real good web designers. Now, if you're using theme forest for all of your projects, don't feel bad. I've done it. We've all been there. Now, think about it. If all you're going to do is purchase a $59 theme on Theme Forest and just slap your client's logo on it, why would they pay you thousands of dollars? Remember, web design is all about communicating effectively through the web medium. So in a nutshell, it's about bringing a solution to a problem. And in this case, the problem is the fact that the client is trying to communicate something to its target and they hiring you to communicate that effectively. Now, don't be offended if you are using Team Forest. I've done it, we've all done it, and there's actually nothing wrong with using the Envato stuff. Once again, what I'm talking about is relying exclusively on other designers' work. And I gotta give credit where it's due, because if we go back in the time before the Theme Forest and Envato era, you had pretty much to code everything by hand. Now, I know that there are other companies outside of Envato, but you know what I mean. So before the Envato era, I was pretty much coding everything by hand, or sometimes using WYSIWYG like Dreamweaver just to go a little bit faster. So the thing is, at that time, it took way more time to create truly professional websites which means that the websites were more expensive and took more time to deliver. So it wasn't always possible for small businesses to invest in a truly professional website. And in that perspective, Theme Forest and Envato in general was really a game changer. But you have to bear in mind that at the time, people using Theme Forest were webmasters, as it was called back in the day, some with a designer profile and some with a developer profile. So they knew what they were doing and Theme Forest just came as a help to speed up their projects which meant more business, so it was good for them and also good for the very small businesses that now could afford a professional website. But nowadays, many people are labeled web designers when actually all they do is purchase the theme and like I said, slap the client's logo on it. So it's just like if you work at McDonald's and you call yourself a cuisine chef, when the reality is you are flipping burgers. Now, don't worry if you work at McDonald's. Actually, I've worked three weeks at Burger King a long time ago. But what I'm trying to say is, Pulling a burger out of the freezer, pushing on a button and waiting for the burger to be cooked doesn't make me a cuisine chef. And in the same way, purchasing a theme on Theme Forest and slapping the client's logo on it doesn't make you a web designer. Now, don't be discouraged because actually it's way easier than you think. And I'm getting to it in a moment. But before I do, let me give you this example. When we're born as babies, we don't talk. We just listen to our parents and the people in our circle. And then we just repeat and mimic what they're saying. And then we associate sounds and words with images. And the more we do it, the more we observe, the more we know actually what it means. And today, as a grown man or woman, you don't even think about what you're doing when you speak. You just speak. It's just natural. Now, instead, just imagine that when you were a baby, you had a little device, a little box, and you could just push a button when you thought about something. So if you wanted some milk, you just push the button, and then the speaker says, I want some milk, but you didn't do anything. And then you could do this for pretty much anything. So little babies, like one week old baby, could tell you what they want. Sounds spectacular, right? Now, the trouble with this is what happens when they break the device or they lose the device or there's no battery in the device. They wouldn't be able to speak. And even as adults, they wouldn't know what to say because they still need that little device. OK, at this stage, you should know where I'm heading to. It's simple. If you want to become a better web designer or just a good web designer, if you're just starting out, all you have to do is observe, mimic and repeat. 
And the fastest way to learn, in my opinion, is to just go to websites like the awards website or other website showcase galleries. Then pick a website that you like and try to recreate it. You're gonna face some challenges. That's true. Maybe just starting at the header, but that's good because you're gonna ask yourself so many questions. Why is the header like this? And how do I have a background image? How do I get this image moving? How do I add a video? How do I get the same font? Why did they use that color palette? Where do I find good images? How do I design for the mobile? And what about the tablet version? You get the idea. Asking yourself those questions and finding the solution is gonna help you so much. I've seen people that studied for years and all they could produce is mediocre websites at best. And on the other hand, I've seen people in as little as three to six months producing stunning websites. I'm not kidding you, those people are the people that can find jobs easily because they can quickly craft a portfolio or if they wanna go the freelance route, they will get some clients because they got skills and no school is gonna teach you that. Now, don't get me wrong, going to school and getting a degree is good, is actually a smart thing to do. But if I had to choose between someone with a degree and mentions and all of that, but that can only produce mediocre website, and then on the other hand, I have someone that did not finish school maybe, but they have a stunning portfolio, they got skills, they love what they do, they have the passion, and they know how it works, I would not hesitate a second. And please don't offend me by asking me which one I would pick. So the truth is, you could get started today. Just go to the awards.com website, pick a website that you like and try to recreate it. And see yourself progress. And in three to six months, you'll be stunned at how much you've progressed. Next, get some sleep. So I've never been someone that really needed much sleep, to be honest. But just like you want to declutter your desk and your office, if you want to be productive, you may want to declutter your mind. And having a healthy sleep balance can really help. Now, as you can see, I'm not in my bed. I'm actually in the couch. So my number one trick when it comes to sleeping well is actually taking micro naps of 15 minutes. And trust me, it kind of tricks the brain like you had a good night of sleep when actually you only slept like 15 minutes. So I'm trying not to over abuse it because you don't want to play with this. But still, maybe once or twice in a day, it's so, so good. It may seem like 15 minutes is nothing, but try it for yourself and then come back and let me know in the comments. Go on, try it. Okay, I'll see you in 15. Next try to get inspiration outside of your computer. Maybe you don't have a beautiful beach behind you like this. Maybe you have the forest. Maybe you have a beautiful city. Maybe you can go to a museum or just look at street art, but you need to get some different inspiration. And if you live in a place where there's no beach, no mountain, no nature, no forest, no city, no street art, maybe some considering to move out. Now, I love my computer and you probably love your computer too. But after coming here and seeing all of this, I'm seriously gonna get inspired. Now, maybe you like something else. Maybe you prefer to play video games. Well, play video games then and get inspired by the beautiful design of the game you're playing. Maybe, like I said earlier, you love museums. Maybe you like paintings. Go there and get inspired. And if you're stuck and maybe you can't go outside, you can still look at online galleries or maybe you can even look at Google Earth. If you can't travel, just Get inspired, do what you can with what you have. And when you finally go back to your computer, check how much more inspiration you have. If you follow all the tips I share with you, and if on top of that, you get inspired, you're gonna create stunning websites. Websites that actually communicate effectively what the client is trying to communicate. And if you do that, you'll be able to sell websites for a premium and you won't be competing on price anymore. Next, don't focus on the tools. So we see some art behind me. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of Pablo Picasso or Leonardo da Vinci? I hope you do. And if you don't, Google is your friend. There were really famous artists that lived before the internet existed. But did you know which exact tool they both used? I bet you don't. Well, I don't either, because it doesn't really matter. Sure, some tools can help you speed things up and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But if you just focus on the tools and if you don't focus on your craft, nothing is going to change and you won't become a better web designer. But I know you do because you're watching this video. 
It doesn't matter whether you use Webflow, WordPress, Squarespace, or whether you code by hand and design with Photoshop or with whatever tool you want to use. What matters most, in my opinion, is that you choose a tool set and then you master it. I call this an ecosystem and I've already covered that in a few videos, but basically in my case, I've decided to use WordPress, then I use Elementor and Elementor Pro, and then I use a set of third-party add-ons. And the main one is CrocoBlock, which is an outstanding suite for Elementor Pro. And as you may know, I like to use the Astra WordPress theme to work with these. So in my case, with WordPress, Astra, Elementor Pro, and CrocoBlock, I can build pretty much anything I want. And knowing an ecosystem that I know in and out is gonna help me complete projects way faster and cherry on the cake, I can let my creativity flow because I can design pretty much anything I want without the technical hurdles. And this way, I'm able to sell my websites for a premium. Next, take care of your work environment. Now, if you are employed, it's not always possible, but still, there are things that you can do. And if you're a freelance, it's gonna be even easier. Now, I've already covered my own setup, and if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link in the description below. But the thing is, you don't need anything fancy, especially when getting started. But the thing you do need is peace of mind. So one of the first things I would advise you to do is to just declutter your desk. Whether you're employed or working for yourself, this is something you can do. Just tidy up your desk, make it clean. And I know some people don't really care about that, but you don't really know until you've tried. Because basically it's just like when you have a lot of things on your mind. They say you got a lot of issues, a lot of things going on, it's gonna be hard to focus and produce a good work. No matter the industry, this is beyond web design. Well, whether you know it or not, as a web designer, your desk is one of your tools. So it's a good habit to declutter everything that's on your desk so that you can really focus on your work. Now, the next thing you can improve is your lighting. Make sure it's comfortable to work. Now, in my case, sometimes I like to work with the standard office lighting, and some other times I like a lighting that's a bit more creative. Another thing that you can improve is the sound environment. So if you work in a loud environment, it may not be easy to focus and get creative. So in that case, you could get a headset. A regular headset would do, but it's even better if you get the budget to buy a headset with active noise cancellation. Even with no music, it blocks all the sounds and you can really focus on what you're trying to do. And if you prefer working with music, then it can do that also. Now, one thing I would really invest in is a good screen. Now, if you don't have any money, don't worry about it, work with what you have. But if you do have some money, this is one of the first things I would invest in. Because as a web designer, you're gonna spend a lot of time in front of that screen. 